If I had to guess, you were letting so many closed sales slip through the cracks, even after you went through all the trouble of sourcing that lead, hosting the consultation, going through all the details of what you offer, and then somebody says they need to think about it, and they're out the door, and you never hear from them again. This is due to the lack of a very effective follow-up strategy. We all don't want to be annoying. We all have other better things to do than chase people around for an answer of, do you want to work with me or not? But... The future of your online business oftentimes can be dependent on if you are good with follow-ups and being able to close sales that you're going to lose otherwise without the proper follow-up strategy. So I'm going to teach you my foolproof three-step follow-up strategy for after a consultation when you still want to close that sale. You don't have to be annoying, but you do need to be persistent and effective. So let's get into it. And if y'all are new here, hey, my name is Emily. I am a full-time business mentor. I've been working with women in online brands for about five years now, helping them start up their online service-based businesses. I specialize in social media use, product development, online sales, and so much more. I really do comprehensive education for new business owners. So if you have a business idea that you need help getting off the ground, or you know you want to be an entrepreneur and have that freedom of working online, working remotely having financial freedom, but you don't know which of your skills to capitalize on. I help with all of those things inside my free consultations that I host weekly. So fill out the general interest form linked down below. Let me know your goals. Let me know what you're looking to create. And I would love to chat. All of that is always linked in addition to details about all of my mentorships. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I highly recommend it. Every single Wednesday, I post a tangible like business building educational video, just like this one. And every single Monday, I post an episode of my podcast, The First Million podcast where I talk all about creating financial freedom, whether you work in corporate, you're an entrepreneur, you're just a financially focused and driven girly, that is going to be the podcast for you. I'm very consistently active on social media and all the fronts. So all of my social media accounts are linked down below. Highly recommend checking those out. And without further ado, let's get into the video. And because I've said it in every video and I'm going to continue to say it through the end of the month, okay? This is not my normal setup, okay? I have a beautiful home office at my actual home and I'm just not there right now. I travel a ton and I'm in my little apartment in Utah right now while I'm waiting to get back home and get back into my normal filming schedule. So it was Utah girl summer, but now it's time to go home and get back with my good decor and background. So if this is your first time here, you can expect better aesthetics in the future. <laughs> Okay, so let me like paint the picture of this scenario for you guys one more time. I kind of mentioned this in my intro, but what I'm talking about when it comes to an effective, efficient follow-up structure is let's say you host a consultation with somebody and they're very interested in what you have to offer. You're probably thinking they're gonna say yes to working with you. They're like just, you know, listening to you. They're very engaged and you get to the end of the call and you leave with the parting answer from your potential client of, I need to think about it or I need to think about the payment plan I want to do or think about when I want to start, whatever it is. They're just not quite ready to commit fully right then and there on the call. Now, this is not ideal. And I want to preface this video by saying that if you can avoid having to do the follow up process pretty much at all, I'm going to recommend it because you have somebody's attention the most intensely and in the most focused manner that you're ever going to have it that first initial time that you're speaking with them. It only kind of dwindles and the doubts or insecurities or whatever it may be kind of grow from there. So you have the most strong case to closing a sale that first time you're talking to somebody. So I really encourage you to brush up on your actual sales call strategy, learning how to close a sale on that call effectively. That's a topic for another day. If y'all want me to do some videos on that, please just let me know in the comments. I'm happy to do that. And with that in mind, we can get into what happens when it's not quite possible to close that sale on the call. And you then need to make a game plan for what to do to not let that lead slip through the cracks. And as I mentioned in the title of this video, you could literally be like tripling or more than that, like multiplying the sales that you end up closing because follow-ups are such a key part of the sales process. It is very normal for a client to not be 100% ready to commit to what you're doing the first time they talk to you, right? We can increase those chances by having great sales skills and a great application and intake process. But in the end, you're always going to have somebody who's like not ready to commit right then and there. So when you learn how to effectively follow up with people, it just means that you are building like insurance on not wasting your time on these consults and not just settling for the fact that, yes, yeah, some of my sales aren't going to close. It's like, well, 
you could salvage a lot of those people in the aftermath of that call if you follow up correctly. So I have a three-step process that I use and that I teach my clients, and it generally results in a very much higher percentage of client response and closed sales than just going through like a general, maybe like half-assed scripted follow-up email a couple days later. Like that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do when you get off of the phone with the client you just spoke to is make sure you have detailed notes on everything you talked about. So your best case scenario is that you had somebody fill out like an intake form or an application. So you have details on what they were there to talk to you about, what their goals are, their pain points, et cetera. Make sure you take notes while you're listening to that person, but stop for a second after the call and jot all of that down. Okay. That's like your pre step one step of the process. So the first thing you're going to do is depending on how your initial contact was initiated, you're going to send an immediate outreach of thanks, appreciate and next steps through that avenue. So what I mean by this, specifically, if you're like most of my clients who are having initial contact with their potential clients through social media, you're going to immediately fire off. I'm talking within like 10 to 15 minutes. You're going to fire off a quick DM, thanking that person for their time, letting them know how nice it was to meet them reiterating specifically like what you talked about a little bit. You're keeping it in like one to two sentences, letting them know that you understand kind of what they've got going on and that you're going to be following up with step two, which is going to be a curated follow-up email. Now, if you didn't have your initial form of contact with this person through DMs or even through, you know, text or whatever it might be, you may skip over this step and go straight to the email process of it all. But I do think that because most of you guys are looking into like building the type of business that I I have, which is social media based. A lot of y'all are going to have a social media like line of communication going on with your potential clients. So I recommend firing off a very just genuine, nice to meet you, loved talking about X, Y, and Z. I'll be sending you a follow-up email with a bunch of, you know, fun details and next steps within the next insert time frame. And I'm going to say that needs to be within the next 12-ish hours after you have that consultation. Now, this is where, again, getting into step two, sending a cure follow-up email. This is where we really get into sense of urgency. Of course, if you can get, you know, a follow-up email in somebody's inbox by the end of the week or the end of the business day, that's great. But I really recommend having a buffer time between consultations where you're able to sit there and pull from, you know, your curated notes on this client, as well as the template for an email that you use. We're going to talk about that in a second. You pull all that together and get that sent out like literally within 30 minutes to an hour after a consult. When I hang up the Zoom call with somebody who's like pretty much ready to work with me, but they're giving themselves doubts, right? I'm remembering every passing minute gives them time to talk themselves out of an investment that they might need to make in their business and that they know they want to do, right? But we always talk ourselves out of things. So I'm capitalizing on that sense of urgency and that sensitivity of time. And I'm getting that email sent out immediately, like within the hour. So thinking about like time urgency is very important. Now let's talk about what needs to be in that follow-up email to actually make it seem legit and not like scripted and icky and all the things. As with most things in business, I want you to take the word script, DM script, email script, whatever it may be, and throw it out the window. I do not think that scripts are a good idea at all. All you need to have templates with lots of room for customization, and that is going to be your best bet. So after you watch this video, you're going to go into your emails and you're going to type out a template with lots of room for customization, but with a general format in place. Here are the main points you need to address with every single person you follow up with in that email template. First things first, you need to have a very appreciative introduction opening up, you know, relating personally to this person on some level. So if you guys talked in your sales call about a trip they're going on about their pet that hopped up on their desk during the Zoom call, whatever it is. Relate to them on some personal level again to show that this is not a generic script and then directly go into a summary of what you guys talked about. The first and most immediate thing you need to get out of your mouth in that email is I understand what you are dealing with and I know how we can work together to fix it. So a summary of pain points and goals comes first. Next comes like details of your offer specific to the person at hand. So this is where your template can kind of come into play. You can have a summary of like the length and structure and details of your offer in place. But before that, I think looking at the actual methodology, the things and the tools that you use to help people create change, 
relating that to specifically the problems that that ideal client is having, that's what makes it feel very authentic. So instead of me going through my entire laundry list of things that I might cover with, you know, any given client inside my mentorship, like I literally have 130 pages. I think it's more than that now of textbook material that I give people. Instead of running through all of that and just kind of saying, hey, yeah, we might touch on any and all of these things, I'm going to pick like the five to 10 most key points that I cover inside my methodology. I'm going to relate that to their goals and I'm going to make sure that what I present is all very custom to that person. So you're telling them, here's what you're going to have access to, but here's what matters to you and why. So you go through, you know, personal relatability, introduction based on what you discussed on the call. You go into the transformational pieces of your methodology. So reviewing what you offer, but custom to that person. Then you get into kind of your standard structure of your offer. So this is where it's this many weeks. This is how much access you get, all the things. That's pretty standard. That can be in your email template. Then generally you're reiterating timeline and payment plan stuff. So you may have made some decisions already with the client. That may be the thing that they're thinking about. This is where you have general details about what you offer when it comes to payment plans, when it comes to actually determining when someone's starting to work with you. But any decisions that they still need to make, obviously you're gonna note that there, give them their options. And you're going to immediately follow that with what happens next. And this leads me to my third point. In the beginning of my business, I always, always, always made sure to have a follow-up call booked with any indecisive lead that I was dealing with. So before somebody got off the call with me initially, where they were like, hey, this sounds great, but I need to think about it. I would say that's totally fine. I'm going to send you a follow-up email uh, summarizing everything we discussed. But let's also go ahead and get a follow-up call on the books for within the next three to five days so we can run through that email together, talk about final decisions and just help you make the best decision for you. Now you can decide if that's feasible for you to host follow-up consultations, right? For me, I got so busy at a point that I ended up not doing that anymore. And I just created a really, really good follow-up system via email. But I do think that it's good to offer that still in that last portion of your email. If it's a time where people like really want to do something with you, but they need a little bit more reassurance, they have questions, give them the opportunity to book a follow-up call with you. I think that's really helpful and or tell them what to do next as far as how to communicate with you what they're deciding on payment plan, on timeline, on final decision, et cetera. And then give them a sense of urgency. So for me, I generally find it pretty courteous to say to somebody, hey, I'm going to hold on to this spot for you because I think we'd be a great team to work together. I'll hold on to this spot for you know the next 48 hours. Let me know how you want to proceed from there. And that's me telling them I think we'd be a great fit, even if I have other consultations booked on making sure that you have, you know, first right of refusal to the spot that you kind of interviewed for inside my online service. But it's not like you can get back to me in three weeks and tell me that you want it. Like I have to keep working and selling in the meantime. So that's going to be your total summary of what needs to happen inside that follow up email. And like I said, you have the option to book in advance or to give the option to book a follow up call. So once all of that comes together, obviously, if you have a follow up call scheduled with somebody based on your initial sales call, that's great. You're pretty much good to go at that point, in which case you get on that call and then you have a second really good opportunity to close. Close. But if not, and you send this email and you're not hearing a good response within the first 24 to 48 hours, you want to send a minimum of two more follow up emails and or DMs opening, you know, the door for questions, concerns, reassuring somebody that they are a good fit, that you see them as a good fit to work with you if you genuinely do. And depending on where you're at in your business, you might even find it valuable to offer someone an incentive, kind of a last ditch effort to sign up with you if you know what their core core objection was, right? If you know that somebody's core objection was like, hey, this all sounds so amazing, but I don't know if I have that disposable income right now. You might then say in your last follow-up email, hey, I just wanted to touch base one more time and let you know that if it's more feasible for you to start with and then you illustrate maybe a downsell offer that's like a little bit less expensive or a more extended payment plan. You offer that to them as, like I said, a last ditch effort to salvage that sale. Even if it's not to the fullest extent, you can still get somebody through the door. Maybe it was timeline that was the problem. Offer an extended timeline or an opportunity to secure a spot six months in the future. Whatever you're comfortable curating in your business as far as customization goes, always kind of be ready to come through and offer that rather than just letting your follow-up situation just like trail off and you know it doesn't even matter that you sent the first email because you never followed through with two or three more emails 
allowing people to understand that you're going to be persistent, but not annoying, that you're going to follow through without being demanding and that you are willing to work with them and be flexible because you do understand their objections and why they have them. I hope this is really helpful for y'all who find yourself getting discouraged a little bit too often when you get off a sales call that you think went really, really well, but you don't necessarily see the light at the end of the tunnel for a closed sale. This type of very quick and customized strategy for following up can be the difference maker in how many sales you close like to a big degree. And I do think it'd be pretty helpful um, if I did take the time to create a customized like email template for you guys. I've thought about doing that. If that is something you guys would be interested in me putting together, just comment the word email down below or shoot me a DM on my coaching Instagram. I will link that down below and put the handle right here. Just shoot me the word email. And if that's something that I see a little bit of demand coming through for, I'll put that together real quick and send that out to you guys uh, because I do think that it'd be really, really helpful to send you guys something a little bit more direct, but I like to see if you're interested in that before I go and create it. So don't be afraid to be persistent. You're not being annoying. You're just being good at your job, especially if you're a female. It's really easy to feel like you just need to like sit back and wait for somebody else to, you know, come to you and make the decision for themselves. And it kind of just like let it happen. And I want to be the first to tell you this is the time to be a little bit more masculine with your actions, to be a little bit more forward. And like I said, just persistence and making things feel really, really custom, but having it all based on a template so you're not reinventing inventing the wheel every day is all really good strategy. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. Like I said, let me know if I should put together a downloadable template for y'all on this topic. I'm more than happy to do that if I get a little bit of interest generated. And I will see you guys when I am back in my office very, very soon. I literally cannot wait. You guys have the best day or night wherever you're at. I believe in you so much in whatever business venture you're pursuing as always. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye y'all.